Hello, my name is John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. As a professor of automotive technology here at Weber State University, I have shot many videos on automatic and manual transmission uh, theory, operation and diagnosis and it's really a passion of mine. In my videos we've looked at automatic transmissions anywhere from five speeds clear up to eight speeds. We've looked at automatics, we've looked at manual transmissions, we've looked at uh, hybrid and electric vehicle uh, transmissions. But none of those transmissions fas has fascinated me more than this transmission right here that we are going to learn about today. This is the world's first mass-produced automatic transmission. It's called the General Motors Hydromatic Transmission. And it has an incredible story of its development, its design, uh, the group of people that uh, came together to put it together and what vehicles it went in over the years. And every automatic transmission that is used in the world today owes its roots to this transmission right here. So we are going to look at the components, the operation, some of the special service tools, some of the literature, uh, some of the characteristics of this this old transmission. The transmission that pretty much changed the world as far as driving vehicles are concerned. Prior to this transmission coming out in 1940, uh, you only had manual transmissions and a few uh, combination of manual and automatic uh, shifting transmissions that still used a clutch pedal. But this transmission was the f first fully automatic transmission that used a fluid coupling, planetary gear sets, clutch packs, bands, uh, governor, throttle valve, the, the main building blocks of automatic transmissions today. So let's take a look at this transmission here. Uh, this transmission was donated to our automotive program by a local um, custom shop, uh, Bare Bones Customs, and thank you very much for that. Uh, this transmission came out of a 1949 Cadillac. Um, I assume that they took the transmission and engine out of it to put in a modern powertrain as they were customizing this uh, Cadillac. And... Um, one of the guys that works down there knew that I was an automatic transmission nut and he asked me, hey, do you want this old transmission that we have? And I said, oh, sure. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be such uh, an amazing research project uh, for me. That was last May of 2016. This is February of 2017. It has taken me that long to do the research, to find out the story of the development of this transmission to figure out how it works because although it has all of not all but it has most of the parts that are in today's transmissions it operates a little bit differently uh, as a first design it had some uh, rough uh, edges that were uh, smoothed out in later on uh, designs um, but it uh, it's a it's a fascinating transmission so what I have here on the bench, um, I have a cast iron tail housing back here that has a reverse cone clutch uh, in it. I have the main body of the transmission right here. Uh, these are cast iron, uh, as you can see. This is a heavy transmission. Right here on the side of the transmission is an identification tag. And if you look at the close-up picture of this identification tag on your screen, you'll notice that it has uh, 15 patents uh, referred to on this identification tag. Um, uh, you'll notice it also was built by the Detroit Transmission Division of General Motors. Uh, the name of the transmission is Hydra and then a hyphen Matic. Uh, the model number uh, C53, uh, I believe that stands for March of 1953, and then the uh, sequence number uh, 15186 there. But out of those, well, we'll come back to the patents. Uh, it has a dipstick 
tube here in the top. We'll learn more about the dipstick and the fluid later on. It has basically a half of a bell housing uh, right here that bolts up to the front of this automatic transmission. And then there are different bell housing adapters to go to different engines, depending on which uh, vehicle this was uh, put in. This came in Oldsmobiles and Cadillacs and Buicks and uh, Nashes. It even came in some Lincolns. Um, it came in some Rolls Royces. Uh, so there's the, the other piece, the other bell housing adapter right here, uh, the other half of it, adapts to whatever engine uh, you were using. This particular uh, adapter uh, is made by Offenhauser. Um, a model 5018 and I was able to find a reference to that on the internet uh, saying that it allowed a newer more powerful mid-50s Cadillac uh, engine to connect to the uh, earlier uh, 50s uh, automatic transmission. So uh, this transmission also let me get these pieces out of the way here. This transmission has the valve body on the side and it has a side cover that bolts up right here. And then it also has, of course, a bottom pan, as you can see right here. It says hydromatic, then it says drain, and we've got a drain plug uh, right there also. So a side pan and a bottom uh, pan. It has external band adjustments that we'll learn about a little bit later. But for now, let's, let's look at the story of this transmission. This identification tag actually tells us the story. If you look up all 15 patent numbers that are here and read through those patents um, and look at the sequence of when those patents were applied for, not when they were granted, but when they were applied for, it tells, it tells a very interesting story. So um, I have looked up all 15 patents, printed them out, uh, read through uh, a lot of those. I didn't read every single word in every one. The patents are very uh, complicated um, technical uh, papers, but I was able to read through enough of them to come up with a summary of what each of those 15 patents uh, is for. Now, an interesting thing about the patents is that out of those 15, nine of the patents uh, were issued to a man named Earl A. Thompson. A stands for Avery. So Earl Avery Thompson. Uh, Earl Thompson was born in uh, 1891 and died in 1967. And he... Uh, studied mechanical engineering and electrical engineering uh, in Oregon, and he uh, is an incredible inventor. Um, so we're talking about an automatic transmission here, but to really understand the roots of the automatic transmission, we need to understand a little bit more about this uh, Earl Thompson. Uh, Earl Thompson uh, was very interested in uh, automating or, or making a transmission easier to shift, easier to use. And so uh, back in the day, um, in, the, in the early 1900s, uh, all transmissions were manual transmissions and they did not have synchronizers. And so you had to double clutch and manually synchronize each shift. And so if you got that wrong, it, it, it would often have gear clash or the grinding sound that you get today when you have worn out synchronizers or try to force a synchronizer to do more than it should. Well, this Earl Thompson uh, decided that he was going to invent uh, a better transmission. And so he 
uh, his first patent uh, he filed for in 1918 and he came up with a method of just using a little shifter on the uh, steering column to shift a transmission just by moving this lever it would automatically apply and release the clutch and shift to the next gear in the transmission. Uh, it was a very complicated uh, design transmission but that uh, that started him thinking of ways to automate or improve the, the shifting of a transmission. His real big breakthrough and the one that we owe him a, a great credit to is a patent that he filed for on October 9th, 1923 this one right here and this patent has the first cone type synchronizers to force the synchronization of the gear speeds between the input shaft and the output shaft and it was a revolutionary uh, design and he took this design to General Motors uh, and tried to sell it uh, sell it to them tried to get them interested in it uh, he was told that uh, people liked the automatic transmission or the manual transmission just the way it was uh, but he eventually got in with another person at General Motors that was interested in uh, what he had to say and ended up being hired at General Motors as a, a consultant and a, eventually an engineer um, but this attempt to make shifting a manual transmission easier with synchronizers was the first step on the path to creating an automatically shifted transmission. So he had several other patents and uh, we won't go through what those were but basically he was trying to uh, use his synchronizing design and have automatic shifting of a manual uh, transmission. Uh, in the in the early years well the 15 patents here on the side of the the transmission case uh, are in addition to these ones that we've already discussed so this Earl Thompson the father of synchronized manual transmissions is the one that was hired on to be a consultant and a engineer and team leader for the development of a fully automatically shifted transmission. Now at that time they they didn't have the idea of planetary gear sets and clutches and bands and governors and throttle valves and all that. Each of those were unique inventions that each of these patent numbers uh, refer to uh, and it's it's all in uh, sequence as far as the the patent numbers and and the dates and so what uh, out of the 15 patents that that are here I just want to uh, go down through and give you the sequence of events that led up to this first mass produced automatic transmission now this is not the first automatic transmission this is the first successful mass produced automatic transmission. There were automated transmissions before this but they none of them uh, were used uh, in a widespread basis. Okay so um, the very first patent uh, on here was a patent uh, for automatic gear changing and this was clear back filed in 1932. It actually used solenoids to move valves where compressed air would move a shift fork and uh, shift a transmission but it also had in there a clutch pack a fiber and steel clutch pack like the clutch packs that we are using today as part of that uh, patent all right so that was uh, a patent by uh, somebody named John Michael Vetter but then uh, this Earl Thompson who uh, we just talked about for inventing the synchronized manual transmission he had an idea of connecting a, a two-speed manual transmission 
with a two-speed automatically shifted transmission. So basically you had a, a high and a low manual transmission that you still had a clutch pedal, a clutch disc, a shifter, but it was just high, low. And then in both low and high, it had this automatically shifted uh, two-speed transmission uh, behind it. Um, and it was uh, upshifted with the use of a governor. Uh, and the same, uh, a governor, for those of you who don't know what that is, is just simply a rotating device that uh, increases the fluid pressure with the faster that it rotates. And there are two types of governors in, in the design uh, of this, or in the history of the design of this transmission. There were governors that were driven off this, or related to the speed of the engine, proportional to the speed of the engine, and then there were governors that were proportional to the speed of the vehicle. And uh, as you may know, the, the governor design that won out uh, over the years and was used clear up until the, the mid to late 80s, before we went all electronic, uh, was uh, a governor that was that developed pressure proportional to vehicle speed. So as the vehicle speed increased, the fluid pressure increased, that caused a valve to move that applied a, a band over a planetary gear set and caused it to shift. Okay, then there are a couple other patents uh, in there by Earl Thompson uh, that had to do with the throttle linkage. Uh, if you think about it, the, the, the gas pedal Everything was mechanically connected to a carburetor and to the transmission. So throttle linkage uh, control and manual control with the shift lever for two planetary gear sets this time. So instead of a two-speed manual transmission and a two-speed automatic transmission connected together uh, in the conventional sense with gears, now they had a two-speed planetary gear set transmission that was manually shifted by the driver connected to a two-speed automatic uh, planetary-based uh, transmission uh, in the back. So we, we just switched the type of gears from uh, spur gears to um, planetary gears. Uh, there was another patent for improved throttle uh, linkage and uh, the concept of having a throttle valve. Uh, a throttle valve is a device that when you step on the throttle, the, the farther you step down on the throttle, the, your gas pedal, the higher the pressure becomes in, in a certain circuit in the transmission. So this patent was for the development of throttle pressure versus governor pressure and moving a shift valve one way or the other uh, to cause an upshift, to delay an upshift, to cause a downshift or delay a downshift. That was the first time that that, that uh, was used. Um, then uh, there was finally a, another patent where um, they combined two planetary gear sets together. Uh, they had bands, they had clutches on each of those planetary gear sets to give four forward speeds and it still had a clutch pedal and a clutch disc and that was referred to as the automatic safety transmission or the AST. So you still had a clutch disc that you had, and a clutch pedal you had to uh, release, but once you released it, then you had a four-speed automatically shifted transmission based on governor pressure versus throttle valve pressure. But that still wasn't a fully automatic transmission because we still had a clutch disc. So the next step was to get rid of that clutch disc, and that took uh, a patent by a different guy, a guy named Oliver K. Kelly, uh, and he filed for that patent in 1937 for a fluid flywheel, uh, or what he called a fluid turbo clutch, uh, which is a type of fluid coupling. Now, this was not the very first type of fluid coupling ever invented, but this fluid coupling was unique to work with basically the we took the automated safety transmission combined it with a fluid coupling and now you put all those together and you end up with the hydromatic transmission that came out in uh, 1940 in Oldsmobiles and then 1941 uh, and later in 
not just Oldsmobiles, but but others. And of course, each year they improved it uh, a little bit. But all 15 of those patents, uh, without going into any more detail, we don't have time for that, tell the story of the invention of each little step that finally put all of this together. Um, and it's, it's, it's very impressive. Now today, if you're familiar with automatic transmission oper operation at all, you would look at this and think, oh, well, that's, that's nothing new. But you got to remember, this was the very first one. Uh, nobody had done this before. The other automated transmissions uh, that were out before did not use this design. They used a different uh, design. And so this, to me, is an incredible opportunity, well, for me to learn how this thing worked and to show my students and uh, the, the general public out there, you guys, uh, how this thing works and what's, what's unique about it. And this is, once again, a very special transmission since it is the very first mass-produced automatic transmission in the world. Now, this is a 1953 model. I thought it was a 49 because it came out of a 49 Cadillac, but somebody had upgraded it uh, later on. But it's basically the same design as the 1940. This one's been upgraded just a little bit, but it still has m almost all of the same components in it that the original 1940 version uh, had.